Is binge eating a behavioral adaptation of the polyvagal theory or something else? A behavioral adaptation is something that reduces defensive activation, something that we do to make what we feel inside our pains more tolerable or numbed or just reduced. Behavioral adaptations are things like teeth grinding, fidgeting, bullying, addictions. All of these behaviors and a whole bunch more come from a defensive autonomic state that is dysregulated, like a rageful freeze or anxious flight activation. So what about eating disorders? I'm gonna share a clip with you from one of my open Q&A meetups that I do with my private community. This is fine to listen to, but I would recommend watching it because there's some diagram stuff that I'll show you that, to really illustrate the points. My name's Justin Sinceri. I am a therapist, a coach, and the creator of the Polyvagal Trauma Relief System. Welcome to Stuck Not Broken, where I teach you how to live with more calm, confidence, and connection without psychobabble or woo-woo. This podcast is, of course, not therapy, nor is it intended to replace therapy. I hope this episode gives you something to think about or gives you some clarity on how you understand uh, eating disorders or just behavioral uh, adaptations in general. Enjoy. Where does binge eating come in? Is it an impulse? That would be a behavioral adaptation. A behavioral adaptation is, is something that we do to reduce the uh, intensity of the defensive activation. So that could be binge eating, that could be hair pulling, that could be uh, bullying somebody, that could be drug use, uh, numbing out on your phone. It, it, it's not coping exactly. So coping is like you're just getting through the moment. Behavioral adaptations are you're not even like allowing it whatsoever. You're not really coping. You're just like doing something to stop the defensive activation. So binge eating could result in a feeling of an experience of, of numbing out the, uh, let's say you're like you're in, there's some returning sympathetic energy, some flight fight energy. If, if that's too much for somebody, they might turn to binge eating as a way to reduce it. So it's not really coping with the feeling well it's not healthy coping let's put it that way so it's not like you're just checking out for a couple hours to watch a movie instead you're doing something that is maybe even counterproductive something that's going to result in self-shame uh blaming like you're just kind of it's like you're reinforcing it i'm gonna try and find this image because i don't think it'll do a better job of explaining what i'm talking about i'm not seeing i'm not necessarily seeing the difference between unhealthy coping and behavior adaptation I would say that unhealthy coping is a behavior adaptation. So cope, coping would be, let's see if we can do this better. Coping might be, you, you know, using a coloring book. You're not really grounding in safety, but you're distracting yourself. Coping might be playing a video game on your phone. Let's call it that. Let's do that. Unhealthy coping. Distraction and numbing out. I think it's a pretty good way to put it. I can kind of, yeah, I can, I can get on board with that. Let me show you the image that I have here. Okay, so path A would be, let's say we, we drive up here on this intersection. Stop there. Well, I don't, you don't have to stop, I guess. But we're on this intersection, which would be maybe some defensive activation. All right, so in this little spot right here, right before the stop sign, is defensive activation. So maybe some re re coming out of shutdown into flight fight activation, or maybe the freeze uh, flight fight activation is attempting to discharge. So this, there's kind of like a, a point here where a couple things could happen. One of them is you could listen to your, bodily, your body's needs. So maybe there's an impulse underneath what you're experiencing. Like if you were coming out of shutdown into flight fight and you notice some returning anger or power or uh, fight energy, basically. One option would be that you do a behavioral adaptation like binge eating. So that would take you on this path B it triggers the binge eating or it triggers the uh, defensive state reactivation right here at the stop sign. One option is to go path B, which is binge eating, which takes you right back. Like it kind of feels better. It kind of feels like you're going forward towards self-regulation, but it just takes you right back to the starting point. Okay. So that, that's a behavioral adaptation. That's how I kind of conceptualize it. Whereas if you instead were to notice that flight fight activation coming back in your system and you could allow it through the UDS stuff, so if you could allow it, witness it, and experience it, that's the, a, a, the awe method, 
then you may notice that there's an impulse underneath the returning sympathetic flight fight stuff. And maybe it's to squeeze or push. And so if you follow that impulse, then that would lead you up the self-regulation path, up the A path. Okay. So path B mimics path A, but it takes you right back. It kind of feels like when you, when someone binge eats, it kind of feels better in a sense, or it feels like you feel less um, defensive activation. So it's pseudo self-regulatory. It's kind of like coping, but you just end up right back. And as you do that, as you spiral back, there's going to be thoughts of self-blame and judgment and shame. And how could I do this? And I knew what I am worth this or, you know, that kind of stuff. Path B, the um, behavioral adaptations, those come along with those cognitions that are, are those more like negative cognitions and feelings of shame and uh, embarrassment, humiliation, that kind of stuff. So path B, it says, but no more, no, it's not mindful. There's no mindfulness there. It's very reactive. You're just trying to get rid of the feelings. Whereas with path A, there is judgment. Tor- I'm sorry, there's not. There's not judgment. There is curiosity. And there is interest and that there's a, from that curiosity, you'll be able to allow the impulse to climb your polyvagal ladder using those uh, very hidden, oftentimes impulses that underlie our emotions and our cognitions. Yeah, behavior adaptations, it looks like in your diagram is going in circles. Yeah, so that would be exactly. So it's just self, uh, self fulfilling. Is that the right word? It just sets you right back up for the exact same situation over and over again. So it kind of feels good, but then like you're going to crash. It kind of feels good. Very much like an addiction, I I would say. Very similar. Would OCD be something like a behavioral adaptation? I think so. Yeah, I think that comes from specifically a very panicky um, freeze, flight flavored freeze. That's, but there'll be, I mean, it comes from like mild anxiety, but I, I don't, there's ways to cope with anxiety, but that's not OCD. OCD, I think, comes from really intense, like panic flavored, uh, free state. That's what I, I would argue that. Maybe rage flavor, maybe fight flavored, but I would say definitely panic. So yeah, those uh, the OCD thoughts. Like if you're going up that path and the the that intense freeze, panic energy hits. And then the brain says, I need to do something to make this feel better. One of my clients, she would, oh, prayer. She would use really intensive prayer. Uh, and, she, and she recognized it wasn't just like peaceful praying and connection. It was like, there's something I have to do this to make myself feel better. And so that was like, she'd feel this activation and her brain would go to all sorts of catastrophic thinking, like death and of her loved ones and whatnot, mom abandoning her. And, but then the solution in her brain would be, Pray, 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 like, you know, but it wasn't a calm, meditative, connective experience. It was intense and have to. So she would do that, which kind of made her feel better, but then she would come right back that, like that compulsion to do that behavior would come right back to that, um, the stuck state. Could behavior adaptation replace and or get in the way of cognition? I'm kind of thinking there are cognitions that could be more helpful. Like if someone can actually feel what's happening within them, then there will be cognitions of what to do with it in a more compassionate way. So if you can allow your defensive activation, your brain might come up with, hey, this would be a really good idea right now. If someone feels fight energy, your, their, their brain might say, now's a really good time to do some push-ups or uh, go for a swim or push against the wall or maybe just get a hug. I don't know. All those cognitions might enter someone's brain, but if they just go back to the behavioral adaptation, then yeah, th- those cognitions won't come into their brain. Instead, it's going to be, I need a drink to make myself feel better. If that thought, if that cognition is followed and acted upon, then yeah, all the other ones that are, might be more helpful as far as self-regulation, all those other ones might probably won't pop into their mind or if they do it won't uh won't be acted upon so you're saying if you progress path a you'll feel an you may feel an impulse if you're uh mobilizing in interiorly and you may want to push something pull something and 
yeah. to mobilize well, it. Because be. yeah. I think I get into the loop because of also a cognitive something or other adaptation that says, oh, you can't act out. So then I act in, you know, with, with that. I use that same phrase in, in the in the trauma and political paradigm book. I, I use the phrase cognitive adaptations, which is exactly what you just said, which is our brain comes up with uh, like a life theme to contain what's happening within us. Like I can't act out. I can't make a scene. You know, so that cognition pop, pops in and like shuts down the maybe rightful defensive activation. I teach you about the polyvagal theory fundamentals within my polyvagal trauma relief system. But I go beyond that and I actually teach you uh, a lot more, like how to build the strength of your safety state, how to mindfully feel defensive activation, and even relieve your stuck traumatized state. You can access my entire system within my Total Access membership. Within the Total Access membership, you'll have the opportunity to connect with, the, uh, with my private community, and also spend a little bit more time with me. I do these meetups twice a month and I'm always active in the community forum or message board. Plus there's a whole bunch of other perks you get like a second podcast. But if you don't want to access the community and you just want my courses, I have an option for you as well. Head over to justinlmft.com slash total access. And there's an option for community only, courses only, or the total access, which is community and courses. Again, that's justinlmft.com slash total access and just scroll down to the uh, pricing options. Thanks so much for being a listener and being a part of this podcast. If you're on YouTube, I would love to hear what you thought about this. Leave a comment in the comment section. And I really look forward to seeing you within the total access membership. Bye.